So I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of our land, the Botticella people, their elders, past, present, and emerging. So first I want to thank Father Greg for inviting me today to be with you. Um, I've come down from Darwin, as he said, and uh, I'm a bit cold at the moment, but I'm uh, warming up slowly. So thank you for having me with you. Um, Bishop Jeremy, of course, uh, followed me as the Dean of the Cathedral, so uh, I'm still part of the family uh, with all of you, with him too. Um, so I wish to offer my sermon today in the name of God the Father who created us, his Son who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who continues to sanctify us. Amen. So my question today is, how does God speak to us in this modern era? Obviously, as followers of uh, Jesus, we reflect regularly on his words in the Gospels. But we don't know everything about Jesus. St. John ends his Gospel by saying, there are many more things that Jesus did which are not written here. If they were, they would fill all the books in the world. But what is written here is there that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through our faith in him, we may have life and life eternal. But Jesus says in John 16, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. It would be too much for you to bear. However, the Spirit will lead you into all truth as time goes on. Yes, God is still speaking to us today. Are we listening? Certainly by being here today, we are again connecting with Jesus and his, through this blessed sacrament and through our fellowship one with another. We support each other in love in this journey of ours through life. We are on a journey that involves being open to the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Now last week we celebrated All Saints Day and also we remembered of course all souls and all the faithful departed and that we are surrounded by a great company of heaven day by day. Saints are people who were deeply in touch with God, weren't they? And it's interesting that each of these saints changed the thinking of the day, as of course did Jesus. And in doing so, many of them suffered even to death. I'm thinking of just a few of them today. There are thousands of them, of course, and many unnumbered and unspoken and unknown. But I'm thinking of people like William Wilberforce, who changed our Christian thinking. What were we doing in those days? We were sending slaves to America. And we were happy about it. It was part of our Christian duty. He said, no, that's wrong. These people are children of God like you and I. They are equally loved by God. That was a big debate in the parliament in Westminster. How can you change things like that? We've been used to this for years. And then David Livingstone in Af Africa said, these are God's children too. They're not animals. And he changed the thinking again. Then I think of the great saints who gave their lives. I think the first one we, rec we remember is St. Stephen. You remember he was preaching in the Acts of the Apostles and the scribes and Pharisees and the lawyers didn't like what he was saying because he was telling them what they were doing was not too good. Looking after themselves all the time and not thinking of the people. And of course what happened to him? They stoned him to death. But his word lived on. People saw his faith and the gift of God was spread abroad as a result of his dying. So today God is still speaking to us and showing us new ways. Look, there are no more slaves, or not in our world anyway. There are in some parts, but there is no more fear of women being in ministry. Remember that horrible debate we had about 20 years ago when... Uh, we had to change the idea that women could be priests. 
That was terrible for some people, and they got very upset. But we eventually got through it, and I believe that God was speaking to us slowly through those things. And yet there's still many more things I think we've still got to deal with. There's uh, sometimes progress is a bit painful, um, and there are still um, some amazing conversations going on in our church worldwide at the moment on uh, human sexuality, for instance. And there's a lovely introduction to our pew sheet today, which is worthwhile thinking about. We're really battling with the environmental issues that might be killing us. Um, uh, are we going to survive? Um, and so on. And I'm sure each of you have had issues that you'd like to answer, like, um, what, is there a cure for my cancer? Why is there so much crime around the place? Why so much disability? Why is there dementia? Why is there sickness? Why there's premature death, etc.? God is speaking. And I think one of the interesting ones was that young girl, Greta Thunberg, when she sailed across the Atlantic in her boat, saying, the environment is going to kill us. No one took any notice until she did this. She got up in New York and said, we need to do something about it. This was 2019. And two years later, we are beginning to do something about it. But up to that time, nothing was done. I think of Jonas Salk, who I had the great pleasure of meeting in um, San Francisco in 1989. He was the inventor of the polio vaccine. When I was a kid, Hundreds of people were paralyzed. They were walking in irons. When I was a junior doctor in Melbourne at St. Vincent's, um, um, at Heidelberg Hospital, there was one ward of iron lungs, 23 iron lungs, people who were with polio. We thank God for the virologists who've helped us in those areas. And I hope you're all thinking carefully about the COVID vaccine at the moment. Um, these people are leaders and I'm quite sure are following God's a gift of knowledge and his continuing revelation to us of the new ways of doing things. We've still got a lot to learn about love and caring for others, especially those we don't agree with, those sort of things. And of course, the, um, the greatest uh, thing you and I are called to do, of course, is as Jesus said, we are to love God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our soul. This is the first and great commandment. And of course, the second one is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And to love people, you smile at them, you greet them, even though you don't know them. And you're also asked to love your enemy. Not all so easy, is it? All this means that we have to remain in contact with God, in prayer, and in listening to what God is saying to us and to the world at this present time. Our daily prayers, and I hope you do say a prayers every day, of adoration and thanksgiving to God for the gifts we all have, for the wonders of God's creation all around us, um, being honest about ourselves and being able to say, look, I am sorry, I didn't quite meet the mark that you asked me to do today, and saying sorry for the sins we do every, every now and then. And then also to pray for those who are in special need, um, people we know, um, people whom we don't know but we hear about who are in great suffering, um, the sick, the lonely, the frightened, the confused, um, those who we know are going through tough times. But also in daily life, uh, being used to a society um, God's given all of us different jobs to do in our world. And at the end of each day, we can say as we go to sleep, God, I've been busy today. Um, thank you for today. Uh, I know I may have forgotten you and your presence with me, but thank you that you didn't forget me as I go to sleep. Into your hands I commend my spirit. So in this lovely communion service which we share Sunday by Sunday and other times, we again come close to Jesus, giving him uh, our gifts, our talents, 
two copper coins of mites, and I hope you give a bit more than that. Um, as we, uh, um, uh, as the widow did in today's gospel, being aware, of course, of the dangers of promoting ourselves like the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees did in those days, long robes and being big about everything. We are humble people uh, trying to do God's will in the best way we're able to. Um, so today we pray, Jesus, come to us, talk to us, and guide us, be with us today and always, and always give us that gift that you want to give to us, the gift of love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.